like a little bit of like a pigeon alignment base like we're not going to do pigeon pose a lot but we're going to have someone like that pigeon pose alignment in the poses um for your hips so you're going to get the you're going to get the stretch there and then so i drove down from istanbul down here to alachata where i'm teaching and it's a seven hour drive and wow. as i'm driving of course i'm not really paying attention and the check engine light comes on right okay and so all that gets me thinking about you guys is our check engine light come on all the time and we ignore them, right? Something happens to us emotionally, your stomach starts hurting, right? Like, you know, you should get up from your computer and take a walk before you answer an email. Like you feel it in your body. Like there is an indicator, but we're like, no, 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 I'll be fine. I just want to get there. I'm just going to keep going, right? So today's class is about checking in, do that little, like, take your car to the shop, see what indicator lights are on. Do you need to fill up your, your tank? Like, do you need to be like a little bit softer, a little more gentle, right? Um, and yeah, so fill up the indicator, like check in those messages that we normally ignore. Now's your time to like kind of drop in and pay attention. We're going to start in child pose. If it's okay to have your knees fully together and your hands back by your feet in the full pose, that's what we'll go for. Full child pose. Yep, so. And just like, where do your knees come together? Get a little bit more spreading across the low back and across the sacrum. Okay. And then the first few moments of your class, like do a little diagnostic test. Maybe like Mona said, some days it's just my body needs yoga. But other times the light is flashing because emotionally I'm feeling anxious or mentally my thoughts are start starting to spin out of control. How do you need to practice today to fill back up your tank? Inhale. Exhale. Hi, Maria. Yay, everybody's in their summer spot. Child pose. Remembering that a slow breath is typically a deep breath. Take three more on your own, feeling your lungs expand. Maybe breath goes more into the back body in your child's pose. And on your last exhalation, See if there's any more tension that you can let go of. Dropping your torso heavy. Roll up through your spine, coming to seated on your heels. Lift your arms up, interlace your fingers, press your palms away. Good. It's okay if your shoulder blades slide up your back. Just try not to squeeze around the sides of your neck. I want your side body from your outer hip to your armpits to feel really long. And then bend your elbows and cup the back of your head. Think of your shoulder blades kind of like angel wings, folding them onto your upper back, squeezing your shoulder blades together and towards your spine. 
press your head back. Inhale, open. Seated cat cows. Exhale, round in. Chin to chest. Upper back, broaden. Two more. Inhale, open. Take your time. Exhale, round in. Tipping your pelvis backwards, pulling your side waistline back, the bottom tip of your sternum in, stretching the back of the neck. One more. Good, Mona. Inhale, open. And then exhale, close in here. Feeling the widening of your upper back. We're going to use that a little bit later. And then come back up to center. Release. Shift forward until you can tuck your toes under. Okay, so my toes are tucked under in a toe stand. And I really try to keep my ankles together. And again, fold in. Child pose. Arms forward. Trying to keep your ribs connected to your thighs. So what happens here, you guys, it's a little bit more active. I'm using my hands to push my hips back. I'm doing a slight posterior tuck of my pelvis, pressing my heel bone forward until you feel your lower abdominals lift. And then keep reaching your rib cage forward. Maybe stretch out through the armpit, stretch out through the fingertips. Three, two, one. Keep your toes tucked under, roll up through your spine. Sitting back on your heels, toe stand, inhale, arms up. Interlace your fingers, Kali Mudra. Hands interlace, index fingers point up towards the ceiling. Now, use the strength of your arm bones, pulling back, look up, open your chest. Exhale, round in, touch the earth, ground down. Great. Inhale, open, tailbone, sweep back, sitting bones widen. Exhale, round. I even kind of Push from my upper back into my fingertips to get some rebounding action. One more. Inhale, open. And exhale, close that off. Good. Come back up through center. And release. Hands to hips. As you lift up to find kneeling. Good. From kneeling, right foot steps forward. Right heel directly underneath your right knee, arms up, interlace fingers, press palms away. And then here, twist, left hand, outside edge of right knee, right arm reaching back. Now the tendency is, everybody, to kind of let your right hand go back too far. Try to keep your right wrist in line with your right shoulder and instead move your rib cage more. But inhale. Exhale, come back to center, hands plant, step your right knee back, tabletop position. Hands to hips, lift to kneeling, change sides, left foot steps forward. Yep, little bit of balance, arms up, interlace fingers, get that length as you draw your tailbone down, and twist, right hand outside edge of left knee. Left wrist in line with your left shoulder. And as you stabilize that left knee with your right hand, try to twist through the ribs. Do the body scan. Check in with your indicator light. What do you need? More breath, more softness. Inhale. Exhale. Come back to center. And then release. Hands to the mat. Step your left foot back. Tabletop position. From tabletop, toes tuck. Inhale. Pull chest forward. Cow pose. Keep your sitting bones lifted and spreading as you lift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Yeah, and I took a week break. Sorry about that, guys. So it might be a while since you've done a down dog. Enjoy that down dog. Walk the dog, pedal it out, wiggle out your hips. Start to know where you hold your tension. That's your indicator light and check in your neck, your jaw. Inhale, exhale, knees down to the mat, tabletop position, hands to hips as you lift up to find kneeling, right foot step forward, no hands, left foot step forward, feet hip width distance apart, top of your sticky mat, inhale, full stretch, arms up, reach, 
with a generous bend to your knees, hip hinge, come halfway forward, squeeze an imaginary block between your hands, fold your shoulder blades deeper onto your upper back, push your bum back, lift your 10 toes, drop the weight back into your heels, inhale, arms up, reach, Exhale, hip hinge, swim through the air. You should feel the spinal extension that you feel in a cow pose. Heart stays open. One more. Inhale, ground down through heels. Lift up. And as you bend your knees, right? So like one of my indicator lights is like a low, like my low back hurts. So I bend my knees. I try to strengthen the back body. And then exhale, fold in fully here. Ooh, turn off and up. Hands to shins, inhale, lengthen, half flat back. Step your left foot deeply back, lunge. Good, put your back left knee down. Right leg steps out to the side laterally. So the right leg is straight, perfect, clear, yep. Right leg out to the side, straight and lateral. Inhale, cow pose. Walk your hands forward, puppy dog. We want to keep that left hip back over your left knee. Try to really feel down through the bottom of your right foot. And the more you can pull your pubic bone back between your inner upper thighs, like it's facing your tailbone, and your tailbone lifts up. Feel the stretch in your adductor. Inhale. Exhale, come back up to center. Keep your right leg. Inhale, right arm up, open the chest. Exhale, right hand threads behind the wrist, come all the way down onto your right ear, right shoulder. Feel free to keep repositioning that left hand until your left wrist is underneath your left shoulder and you can push down and rotate through your thoracic spine a little more. One. Tighten up your right kneecap, engage your right leg. Two, good Mona, inhale. Exhale for three. Push into that left hand as you come back to center. Tabletop position. From tabletop, keep your hands glued. Turn your elbow creases forward to the top of your mat. Look forward. Make sure your elbows stay over your wrist, lower halfway, chaturanga, just in your upper body. Press back up. Okay. We want to try to keep our elbows brushing our side ribs. Instead of letting the elbows drop back, send the heads of your shoulders forward. Trying to create a 90 degree. Good, Maria. Yes. Back up. Mm-hmm. And we try this one more time. It's a forward shift. You're going to feel more of that extension in your wrist, bending your elbows. Excellent. Press back up. And downward facing dog. Heels heavy, sitting bones lift and spread. Fill up with breath. Two. Yep. The sound of your Ujjayi breath is a really good indicator of your focus and concentration. Knees to the mat, tabletop, hands to hips, lift and kneeling. Left foot steps forward. Right foot steps forward to stand. Little different. Inhale, arms up, reach. Bend knees, hip hinge this time. Interlace the hands behind your hips. See variation, palms all the way together. Like you're smashing a raw egg in between your hands. Keep your hands locked. Open the chest a little bit more like a cobra. Exhale, fold in. Take a child's pose out over your legs. Ribs touching your thighs. Try to keep your wrists together, Mona. Try to keep your hands together. Don't separate your hands. Yep, squeeze your shoulder blades together, bend knees, drop hips, look forward, inhale, open. Yep, this is where you can reset your shoulders. Exhale, fold in. It's kind of a rounding, like our child's pose. One more, inhale, float, 
the chest, fill the lungs, open the heart, and exhale, fold in. Release the hands, Uttanasana, forward fold. Hands to shins, inhale, lengthen, half flat back. Step your right foot, deeply back lunge. Yeah. Put your right knee down, and then we're going to step that left leg out to the side laterally. Walking your arms forward. Puppy dog pose. Melt your rib cage. Widen the armpits open. Top of the foot presses into the bottom of the foot. Left kneecap lift. Engage that left leg a little bit more. Hands walk back and up underneath your shoulders. Keep your legs. Left arm up. That's your open twist. Yep, close the twist. Thread your left wrist behind your right. Lower all the way down onto your left, your left shoulder. Reposition right hand. Until you can release your rib cage. Good. And then depending on what you need today, right? What does your indicator say? Do you need to be like crisper, stronger? Do you need to be softer? Back off, do a little less. Inhale. Exhale, back up through center, tabletop position. This is a little bit of your work today. Elbow creases forward. I use from my toes, I push my hips slightly forward and then bend the elbows, but I want to keep my shoulders on my Priority is wide collarbone. Press back up. Notice if the head of your shoulders dip. Try again. Just only lower as slow as you can feel the shoulder blades stay together. Remember, like when I talk about like, the sharp skin, like a dog, like wrinkling the skin in between your shoulder blades, keeping your heart open. Good. Press back up. Ten. Downward facing dog. Heels drop, sitting bones lift. Favorite cue, but like Mona, if you're a teacher, like I always hear, love hearing like new cues, just like use. I pretend like my hands are on the lids of mason jars, gripping my palms into the mat, and then imagine twisting the cap open, rolling the shoulders open more. Firing up the triceps and the outer deltoids. Inhale. Exhale. Step forward top of your mat. This time, toes come together to touch. Inhale, lengthen, half flat back. Exhale, we want to feel. That's why we started in child's pose today, you guys. I want you to get that child's pose, like feeling out over your thighs. Full connection. Bend knees, drop hips, sit low, chair pose. Okay. So I know my indicator light. It's my trapezius, my neck. When something is hard for me, I squeeze it. Can you float your arms up without creating tension there? Put the strength in the legs, engage the glutes. Inhale. And then exhale, fold in. Ooh, tanasana. Inhale, look forward, lengthen, half flat up. Step your left foot back, lunge. Lift that left foot step back. We lift the back left heel. We make sure our back left is engaged. And then please go into cat pose. Yeah. Do you feel your core? Do you feel your inner legs hugging the midline? Lift to rise. High lunge. Place the hands behind the back of your head, elbows wide. Do you step just away to relax your neck as you work the back leg straighter? Yep. As you press your tailbone forward. And then the top of your right shin bone presses towards the top of your mat as you deepen in. I like to think that the 
C curve of my sacrum slides down. The C curve on the back of my skull slides up. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the mat, top of your push-up. Plank pose. Okay, elbows are locked. From your plank pose, scapular push-up. Just drop your rib cage until you feel your shoulder blades come together. Let me see, rib cage drop. There you go, Claire. Bend your elbows, chaturanga. Put your hips down, point toes, cobra. Without ever letting, um, uh, Maria, bend your elbows more, lower your hips down more, and squeeze between your shoulder blades. Like if I put a pencil in between your shoulder blades, could you hold it? From your inner shoulders, wrap around your outer shoulders, and then press back. Downward facing dog. One. Grip the heads of your mason jars, turn them open, press your heels open, internally rotate your thighs, make space through your pelvic floor. Right leg lift, three-legged down dog. Step your right foot forward, lunge. Back left knee down, left elbow outside edge of right knee, twist. Yep. Can we lift the heart up to the thumb? We don't lean down on our leg. We lift the torso up and away. Three. Two. Maybe where can you do a little less? To melt the rib cage, I like to think right rib, like fingers kind of wrapping under to twist. Fingertips to the mat. Back foot steps forward. Inhale, lengthen open. Exhale, fold it and just keep bending the knees until you feel that full kind of like embrace. Wrapping your ribs, pressing them onto your thighs. Bend knees, drop hips, sit low, chair pose. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen open, half flat back. Right foot steps back, lunge. All right, the pause is the awareness that allows you to tuck your tailbone under. Come into cat pose until you feel like you should now feel your glute on the left side and your hamstring in, engage as you lift to rise. High lunge. So I'm just going to bend my elbows and cup the back of the head to take the tension out of my neck. Sometimes do a little less to then feel a little bit more through the legs and hips. Good, three, two, one. Hands to the mat, step back, top of your push-up, plank pose. Okay, my elbows are locked. My gaze is forward. I try not to drop the head. Scapular push-up. Shoulder blades come together. Hold that imaginary pencil in between your shoulder blades. Now, bend your elbows, chaturanga. Don't let your shoulders drop. Just put your hips down. Heel up into your bhujangasana, your cobra. Without, like, so the mistake that everybody makes is they put their chest down and then they come back up. Okay, no bueno. Come down with your shoulder blades on your upper back. Press back, downward facing dog. Ready? The whole idea is that we don't want to like make a pose and then break a pose and then make and break, make and break. We want to make a pose and then keep something. But that's like the yin and the yang. Like keep something from the pose before that's going to help you to get better alignment in the next pose. That's the vinyasa. Inhale, exhale. Left leg lifts up and back, three-legged down dog. Step your left foot forward up in between your hands, lunge. Good, back left, right knee down, twist. Right elbow outside edge of your left knee. Good. Yeah, 
yeah, so I think this is about like our third twist, you guys. We did one from kneeling. What happens when you really use your exhale? To pull the belly button back to the spine. Lift the heart to the thumb. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, fingertip to the mat. Back foot steps forward. Let's start to add on. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Bend knees, drop hips, sit low, chair pose. And then as you press the stand, left knee comes in towards your chest. Left ankle on top of your right knee. And then press your hips, sit back, awkward chair. Now, I like to interlace my hands behind my hips here in that C variation. And try to feel more cow, especially, Mona, if your hips feel a little tight. It's going to be a nice way to squeeze in here, lowering your rib cage down towards your shin bone. Three. Two. One. Press up to stand. Left knee comes in towards your chest. Left foot steps back. Low lunge. Good. Straighten your front right leg. Back left foot steps in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Pyramid pose. So in general, here I usually have to firm my right hip in a little. And then roll my left hip point down. And then use my hands on the ground to help keep trying to telescope my spine forward and wrap in thinking like a child pose. Can we drape the head, drape the torso? Use it as leverage to stretch out your hamstring. Step back, down dog. That is our difference between your legs. As you inhale forward into plank, do your scapular push up to chaturanga. Now, see if you're ready for your up dog. Yeah. Hips lift up and back, downward facing dog. Right leg lift, three legged down dog. Step your right foot forward up in between your hands, lunge. Left foot step forward to meet it. Keep your spine lengthening forward, half flat back. Exhale, fold in, Uttanasana. Second side, bend knees, drop hips, sit low, chair pose. As you push into your left leg, Press to stand, right knee in towards your chest. Awkward chair, right ankle on top of your left knee, pushing the bum back. So if you, if you need the help with the balance, sometimes like the wider arms, right? You think like the tightrope walker balancing here, or you could interlace the fingers if you like that feeling of broadening across your collarbones and opening your chest. Cow pose through your hips. Dipping your pelvis forward, pubic bone back between your inner thighs. Inner right knee presses down towards outer right knee. Lift all the way back up to stand, arms up, inhale. Right foot steps back. Low lunge. Good. Straighten the front left leg. Back foot steps in. Pyramid pose. Fold. So just like any of the other poses, that if it helps to put that tiny micro bend at the back of your left knee, oops, don't worry, just bend your left knee just a little bit, just a little. See if that allows you to turn your right hip forward more and spin your belly in your ribs more centered 
over that left leg, right? Think like child pose over your left leg. And then the more you push, and you're, it's nice you're in like the grass, the more you think of like rooting the bottom of your left foot into the earth and pulling the left hip up and back, the right leg, the right hamstring will open. Check your indicator light, relax your shoulders. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale forward into plank. Scapular push up to your chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Downward facing dog. Right leg lift, bend right knee, roll right hip open. There you go. And then right foot's going to step forward up in between your hands. Prepare for a warrior one. Spin your back left heel to flat. Lift to rise. Warrior one. Same thing here. From your right hip in. Interlace the hands behind you. Open the chest. Humble warrior. Can you do cat pose through your pelvis? Can you posteriorly tuck? Remember at the beginning of class, you guys, when I had you tuck your toes under, come into child's pose and still do it actively? So we're not just hanging here. We've got our core connection. And then see if you can think heavier with your rib cage, your shoulders, and your head. So feel pretty good on that right hip. Mona squeezing out that tension as you drop in. Hands to the mat. Straighten your front leg as you parallel your feet to the left. Nice. Line up your fingertips with your toe tips. Straighten your arms, inhale, lengthen. Okay, so we try to keep our wrist creases down. Try to bring our fingertips in line with our toe tips so we get the wrist stretch here. Now, as your arms are straight, look forward, cow pose. Yes, my hands are underneath my shoulders. I'm trying to keep my wrist creases down. If you don't feel it in your wrist, walk your hands backwards. Now bend your elbows. Try to bring the top of your head towards the floor like a prep for a tripod headstand. But I don't want anyone to come into a tripod headstand yet. Can you squeeze an imaginary block between your elbows? From your elbows in, can you put your left knee on your left elbow, picking up your left foot? Can you put your right knee on your right tricep, pushing up, picking up your right foot? Holding there, perfect, Maria. Hold that ball. Imagine pushing your elbows down to your wrist, your hands through the earth. Three, lift the shoulders away from your ears. Two, one, split your legs, put your feet back down. Nice, excellent. Pivot turn, top of your mat. Low lunge as you step back. Downward facing dog. Two more vinyasas, you guys. Inhale forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. All I'm really caring about these days are where my shoulder placement is. Downward facing dog. I want to keep my chest open. Final side. Left leg lift. Bend left knee. Roll left hip open. Step your left foot forward. In the back heel to flat, maybe take a wider base, lift to rise, warrior one. Right, the wider your feet are, you guys, the easier it is to turn that right hip forward, keeping your hips more in neutral. Interlace the hands, see variation, open the chest. Really nice, good, you guys. Move a lot of this, shoulders back and down, and then rounding in. So what I would like to do is rest my left hip point on my left thigh. 
What I try to do is tuck under, engage my hamstring, keep that, and then sink in more deeply, not just resting, make it active. Three, two, one. Hands underneath your shoulders. You're going to pivot, turn to the right, parallel your feet. Walk your hands back. Again, elbows lock. Wrist creases stay down. How actively can you do cow pose, internally rotating your thighs, looking forward? Bend your elbows. Elbows stay over your wrist, top of your head down. Yep, set up again. Tripod head stance. I can see my elbows. I can see my wrists. Lift your heels. Point your toes. Keep shifting forward. Point your toes. Point your toes. And as you push your hands through the earth, can you float your legs? Tripod headstand. Five, four, three, two, one. Very nice control, everyone. Feet down. Extend the arms to extend the spine. Pivot forward to the top of your mat, low lunge. Step back, down dog, letting your neck release. One more time, flow. Inhale, forward plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Pull the shoulder blades onto your upper back, up dog. Hips lift, downward facing dog. Knees to the mat, child's pose. Okay, so then really the point is, are you filling up? Are you practicing in a way, staying with your breath? Maybe noticing the breath at the tip of your nose. Okay. Down dog. Arms stretch forward, lift your hips, lift your knees. Downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward up in between your hands. You know what, because of the way you guys are facing the camera, let's switch legs, okay? I just think it'll be a little bit clearer. Left foot steps forward, just for camera orientation. And then over your front left leg, we're gonna take Skandasana. Turn your right toes up, bend into your front left knee. Skandasana. And then you're gonna use that to come all the way down to seated. Left knee opens wide, wide-legged Janusha Shasana. And then please fold down the midline here. general that right leg your right toes might start to tip forward they might op uh, twist into the left could you roll your outer right knee back your outer right hip back anchor down as you continually stretch forward down the midline Lift up to the center, half flat back, 
pivot turn top of your mat pigeon pose just slide your left knee over yep grab your hip and fold in Hands walk underneath your shoulders. Downward facing dog. Okay, so just kind of remember what you did on the other side. If you can't see the camera, right? So your your right foot is going to step forward. Yep. And then you're going to pivot turn, skandasana over that right leg. Good. Yeah, press in, widen your thigh bones apart, and then you sit all the way down. Right heel folds in, right knee opens. Great, to forward fold down the middle. So it's kind of like half Janusha Shasana. Yep, half Upavishta Konasana. Remember, there's a heaviness to that outer left heel, your outer left knee. And then we're going to stay pretty low, lift back up to center. And then you slide that right knee over towards your right wrist set up pigeon pose there you go nice transition there claire as you fold down and in good so continually stretch back through that left leg Little bit different transition, hands come up underneath your shoulders. Turn to face the camera as you come to seated. All right, there you go. We put it all together now, okay? So we had that tripod headstand. We had the shoulder and elbow connection here, okay? So you're gonna practice doing, I like to, I like to come into it from hands and knees, so you can just watch. We're gonna tip forward, you set up your tripod, Lift your hips, walk your feet in, and then one knee up, and then you're gonna try to lift the other leg up here. And then what I want you guys to work today is then the transition to try to switch. And then some of you, as you switch, you might try to plant the knee and lift the head and try to float up into your Ekapada, uh, yeah, Ekapada Bakasana, okay? So you can try to catch it here and lift that back leg. Floating one legged crow pose. It's not easy, but it's always fun to like give these arm balances a try, right? Like, I think especially like they're empowering. Nice, Maria. Good. So you could just practice switching leg. Yup. Kind of gives you this feeling of starting to float. Claire, you're pretty good at these. You're pretty strong. You could try like lifting your head off the mat and trying to drop the straight leg and try to hold nice mona good yes 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 yeah excellent yeah so that's a one-legged ekapata here sasana maybe try to switch legs mona pull in with you yes 
good. Yeah. And so the other way, Maria, you could try to do it is you could do like a bakasana, right? Like right knee on your right shoulder. Then I'm going to start to tip forward. I have on all this lotion, you guys, sorry. And then as you tip forward, you could try to straighten the other leg back behind you. Do you have that at all, Claire? It's kind of stupidly hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maria, lift your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh huh. That's it. <laughs> Love it. Give it. Make sure you try both sides. One is definitely my teacher's side, other is the student's side. And then when you're ready, you can come down to seated. Yes, Monique, kick it back. One second hold always counts. As long as, as long as someone can get it for Instagram, it's good. Okay, bottoms of your feet together. Push your knees forward, diamond pose. Elbows come in front of your shin bone. Your feet are pressed away from you, okay? And this is definitely more of that rounded spine, trying to bring your forehead to the arches of your feet. Okay, this is more of a yin pose. Spine can round. I know we don't have a lot of props today, you guys, but if you imagine kind of something underneath your knees, you're pressing your knees down. In there. Exhale. Roll up through your spine. As you come to a lie down on your back. And then as you step your feet into the mat, knees point up to the ceiling. Can we put our left hand on our heart, our right hand on the belly? Close your eyes. So whether it's a, a long day for you, a long practice, a long drive, Your body is constantly giving you signals. And unfortunately, we've been taught to ignore them, just keep our foot on the gas and kind of plow through. And so I just want to give you some options of how you would like to finish your class. Would you like a bridge pose, a wheel pose, or maybe a shoulder stand? We did a lot of like, Tucking the shoulders under. I'm like, what's what can be beautiful about a, like a home practice? Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. You decide what you need for your next like five to ten breaths. So I'm just gonna take a bridge pose today, lifting my hips up, interlacing my fingers, tucking my shoulders under, and staying here. But if you prefer wheel or shoulder stand. How nice it is to sometimes really give yourself permission to listen to what your body wants. And when you're ready, release the pose, rolling your hips to the mat. Knees draw into your chest. And let's please just finish with a twist to neutralize your spine. Knees to the right. Remember, we always take cat pose through the hips first. We always really get that lift through the lumbar curve. So we're not like rounding into our low back. Re extend your spine and then try to put the twist really into your thoracic spine here.
back through center and change sides. Good setup there, Claire. Yep. Yeah. Now pose. And then release for Dharmasana. Low breath into your nose. Soft thigh, exhale out through your mouth. One more, inhale through your nose. Soft thigh, out through your mouth. And now allow your body a minute of stillness and silence to fill back up the tank. Arms stretch up overhead as you wiggle your fingers and toes. Bend your knees as you roll to the right. And you press up to find seated. So as you fold your hands in front of your heart center and close your eyes, could you just acknowledge, like, like by clearly labeling in your own life, like the indicators that you get, but you ignore? Like, I know mine. But it's through that awareness that when I find myself doing them, that then maybe I can stop, take a breath, stretch out in a down dog. And as you bow your head down to your heart, make that little promise to yourself that you're gonna you're gonna listen to them a little bit more and not just ignore them. To hear them to your third eye, bow forward to seal your practice. Jai, Hidatma. Jai, Jai. 